What's up, everyone? You are listening to the Ravel and Think podcast. I'm Ashley. And I'm Sarah. And happy Thursday. We're back. We're one of our last episodes, Sarah. Our second last episode of the season. Crazy. It is crazy. Another, I can't believe almost two full years of Rival and Queen has been in the in the books. Almost. But, and we won't even get down that path yet. You and know? We're still going. We're still going. We're going strong. Living in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> we try. And we have something new and fun happening in a couple of weeks. Yeah. I know it's hard to believe it's August now. It is officially August. We are in a new month, new month, new me. Is that a saying? <laughs> <laughs> new sure. month, new me. That would be funny. Uh, August 19th, 7 p.m. Something very special, Ashley. You want to you wanna share? Yeah, we're going to be doing a live show on the Halifax waterfront. Our very Outdoors. first. Outdoors. Yeah. At the Salt Yards. You can come on down and see us. 7 o'clock on a Thursday. Of course, we love coming to you on a Thursday. Stop by. Have a chat. We might have some special guests. We are going to have some special guests. So we'll share all the details through Instagram. We'll have some surprise guests for you. Come down, hang out with us. We've never done one before. I'm really looking forward to it. I know we have been talking about doing live events and shows. So this is the first and it's going to be awesome. It is going to be awesome. We have, we have to plan it still, but it'll be great. It's in the works. In the works. And it will also be here before we know it. <laughs> time is flying it's two weeks away okay all right we're ready one, for that. one event at a time one event at a time and tomorrow we've got the golf tournament so that's going to be a hoot hoot do you think I had a call actually with the team at Brunello today yes. and I was like I know that you thought this was just going to be a casual like group golfing I was like but can we put a car on one of the holes <laughs> <He> was, <laughs> what did they say he was like um well and he was kind of, he like laughed. <laughs> and, and I was like, well, people have just really been coming to us and are excited about this event. It's been getting bigger and bigger, which we love. Every time we start something, we just get excited. And then the community is so great. And we have to give a shout out to the community. We love everyone so much because everybody stepped up. And so Audie offered and asked if they could put a car on one of the holes. Imagine if it could be one of the holes that you could get a hole in one and then win the car. I think that would be next year. Next year. Yeah, <laughs> that would be good. We're putting it out there. But, but Chris was from Brunello. It was just like, uh, it's raining like a ton the day before. So we can't this year is what he said. He said, but if you do it, he's like, if you have to do it later or something comes up and we have to switch the date, he said, uh, we could do it then. So that'd be fun. Anyways, all I can see is like next year is going to be the golf tournament of a lifetime. So if you didn't get in this year, make sure you join us next year. <laughs> and we'll definitely have to do 18 holes and maybe co-ed next year. Just like a whole day of fun. I think, yeah, definitely. Bigger and better. I know some of the guys felt a little left out because they couldn't actually golf in the tournament this year, including our producer, Mark. He's mm. giving us a sad face mm. right now. And your <laughs> husband, Jeff. A few people have told me that and jokingly have said oh it's just for women like what the hell because you know how sometimes if it's just for men we get up in arms not the same okay like I just don't think we're there yet where we're going to be yeah. upset about uh, like there's so a sport that's not really primarily played is much by women which are trying to change so let the women have the time have the afternoon we're gonna themselves. have some fun yeah yeah and we're going to meet a lot of people we've probably never met before. So that's going to be exciting too. Oh my gosh. Yes. And like, we've got fun. So far. Anyways, we're having fun. It's the season of events. We've never been able to do events and now we're doing all of them in one month. And if you don't follow us on Instagram, go over and do that right now, because we're going to be sharing a ton more about the golf event. We'll be sharing the whole day. And of course the live shows and other things coming up. Do you think I should bring my megaphone to the yes. event? Yes. I was thinking that. I'm like, how mad are they going to be? Take that out and back that. <laughs> no. Wee, wee, wee. It's just going to be like that. People paid to come. They know we're half crazy sometimes. So I'm not worried about our attendees. I'm worried about Brunello coming out and be like, what is going on? Uh, as long as we're, yeah, we're. They were wondering if they did this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley just had a trip home for the first time since Christmas. It was so nice. I know. And you, you, I heard you say that the other day that it was since Christmas. I was thinking I was just not long ago, but it was six months ago. 
seven months. Oh yeah, now we're August. <laughs> but isn't that crazy? almost eight? Like yeah. But I just feel like it wasn't that long ago. So we're closer to Christmas now. I know. I'm like, yeah, it's it's closer to me going home again. Uh, it was so fun. And, and I golfed for the very first time back on this golfing topic at the Grand Falls Golf Course, which Amazing. was hilarious. And it was so funny. Lots of hills. Like. Well, I, did I tell you it was like bumpy? Like I mm. almost flipped the golf cart at one point. That doesn't surprise me though. It's super lit. Well, but it, but like the ground was lumpy. It was funny. Anyways, no shade. It's actually an incredible golf course. I would love to do the full 18. Um, it's quite compacted the way all the holes kind of like turn and loop together, but it's all along a riverside. And it actually reminds me of like, if you see a scene in like the Southern States where you've got like those wispy trees and like, like along the riverside and where the water kind of like comes up into the grass, it looks mm -hmm. like that. It's really nice. Like it's mm -hmm. very pretty. Um, and I had it, but it, it had a one lumpy hole, maybe two that were quite, quite bumpy <laughs> to drive over. And also the cart path just like disappears at points and you have to like drive down the hole, which was fine. But for someone who's never gone through this golf course before, I like, wasn't even sure where the next hole was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, like, I, I, I feel like sometimes I get lost. I got lost. Anyway, yeah. you know, there's weird little, the signage isn't great. No, I got lost. I hope they were gas powered golf carts no they weren't oh no it was so funny it was like an electric one so you would just have to put your foot down on it and wait for about five seconds before it would even start uh, <laughs> not quite equipped for the hills no either. no it was really it was very funny though and I saw my old volleyball coach there which was like such a little treat That's funny. he just like whispered he's like Sarah and I was like oh my god maybe he didn't know if it was you for sure because I do that sometimes when I see people that I don't know I'll just say their name and think if they don't hear me then it's not a big deal no no there's no way he didn't think it was me I was like running around outside on the deck trying to get my sister set up with a lesson calling out to my mother and he was like laughing he then he like, knew he knew it was me anyways we had a great little reunion I had fun though like it I lived I had a full-on vacation in Newfoundland that's awesome so speaking of high school and our guest today Wake Matthews who you went to high school with. Who I did not go to high school with, but I you went didn't? To, to junior high. Oh, I'm sorry. See, where I grew up, there was only one school. It was just a high school. <laughs> From grade seven to 12. Okay, junior high school. Yes, which is, it was yeah, like a I reunion I just being funny. for the two of you. It was such a good reunion. And I was so, you know, and I think he's gonna, he's gonna laugh at this when I say this. Cause so he put out a new album recently. The Myth X, which is, I will say, amazing. The 10 year, it was a 10 year, um, I'm gonna kind of anniversary, yeah, of the, of, of the album myth. The Myth, yes, yeah, wow, I felt very tongue twisted. <laughs> <laughs> and if you haven't already listened to the album, please go and download it and buy it. You can mm -hmm. buy it through Apple, um, or you can stream it kind of anywhere. I highly recommend, but similar to when I listened to that first episode or sorry, to that album, and you, we were all on a call together, and I was just so blown away by, I mean, he's so talented. He's an incredible artist. Um, I was so blown away by it, and same thing with this episode. Like, I went into, this will come out wrong, but, like, I went in this episode, was just, like, looking forward to reconnecting, and this is one of my favorite episodes, actually, that I think we've done this year. Amazing. And I just have what a good way to end the season too. It is such a good way to end the season. And I think it just had so much more like inspiration and mm -hmm. heart in it than I was necessarily expecting. Not that I wasn't expecting this. I just kind of had no expectations. Um, yeah. He shared a few things with us that I think he almost paused before he shared them because he hasn't shared them and we won't spoil it now, but he shares God. such a cool story of what really flipped the switch for him recently when he was kind of feeling a little down. Um, and it's hard being an artist here. We're in, so isolated kind of from a lot of the bigger cities and especially in music and hip hop. And it's, it's I, yeah, admire him for, for keeping going. And uh, he's such a role model to a ton of people he probably doesn't even realize. Oh my gosh, a hundred percent. I just have so, so, so much Mark, can you cut this part out? <laughs> I just have so much admiration for Quake. And I think I, I have such a fondness for him in my heart because, you, you know, I'm growing up, so I don't have all those connections of people I've known for a long period of time. And I just really appreciate reconnecting with him mm -hmm. on the show because, you know, I've known him since he was starting in music in junior high. 
then we reconnected when I was at university at St. Evax, we connected then a little bit. And then he's here on the show again. Like this has been, you know, 15 wow. years mm -hmm. since we first probably met. And he's been working at this for that long. And I just have so much respect for him and his talent. And I just, you know, even for what he's doing for hip hop on the East Coast. And I don't think, I mean, sometimes you don't recognize that in mm -hmm. any ways. Quake, if you're listening to this, just so much love. For I you. think he's going to. I don't think he's ever listened to a podcast before. <laughs> he told us that this is going to be his first. Um, and uh, yeah, he shares so many, many good stories. And that was my first time meeting him. And he's such mm -hmm. a nice guy. And I wish him all the success. And hopefully we can hang out again soon. We have to do Rival on the Road. We, and, ooh, and I actually oh, yeah, share my biggest are, fear. Are we going to Europe maybe with him? No, no, somewhere? a karaoke yeah. bar. Oh, <laughs> yes. Rival on the road. Okay, so in this episode, we talk about Quake's journey into music, how he creates the ups and downs of his career, uh, and really how he keeps going through those lows. And we just talk about the hip hop genre and really creating that here on the East Coast. So he's very cool. Please go download his album, The Myth, Myth X. Follow him on Instagram at Quake Matthews, quakematthews.com. All the things, all the places. Mm -hmm. Can't wait. I can't wait to re-listen to this one. <laughs> it's going to be good. All right, let's dive in. All right, we've got Quake Matthews in the studio with us today. Welcome, Quake. Hello, hello. How's uh, my posture? Oh, Ooh, you look good. good. You look to, so trying good. Trying to work on my posture. I'm like a sloucher, I think. I think I a have shoulders back. A habitual sloucher. Ooh, you just... Grew like two inches. Yeah, that's what I'm Chest saying. Chest out. You know what Let's I mean? Let's go. Chest out, shoulders back. I feel back. like it adds to the height. Like It does. Yeah. Should we all do a collective shoulder roll? Now I'm going to be sitting like this the entire <laughs> Shoulders <laughs> up and back. There we go. Oh. I know. It's, it's the computers <laughs> and the phones. They've really uh, messed with our posture. I think so. Mm -hmm. I've never felt this tall before, so this is great. Thanks. We Thanks, all look Quake. great. Perfect. We're off to a good start. We need a photographer in here to capture us this well positioned. <laughs> I we were this. we were all just reminiscing about the weekend. I had a big wait weekend. You guys had. Did you go camping this weekend? Or you mentioned camping in a dog, and I kind of want to hear about that. Oh uh, no! Earlier, for those watching, you asked me if I was afraid of dogs. As we got on the elevator with a dog, <laughs> had a little run in with a dog. It was uh, Canada Day. Um, uh -oh. What got, was the run in? Got, got bitten up pretty what? bad. What? Yeah, pretty bad. What kind of dog? It was. I don't know exactly offhand, but it was like some type of like, I think there was like a little pit bull or something in there. Oh, oh my God. Unfortunate situation. Um, it was the dog belonged to a friend of my girlfriend. So it's just Ooh. an unfortunate situation. But I mean, what are you going to do? I'm healing up good. You couldn't tell. It was on your face. face? It was lips, face, everything. What? So I think I'm doing good now. It's been almost a month. I have since forgiven the dog. And I'm moving on. Did you provoke this dog or he just, he had provoke, it out for you? I don't, I don't know. I didn't provoke the dog. I tried to pet the dog. He was on a leash, but no one was really around. So I don't know if he thought I was a strange man, but what are you going to do? Oh my God. Okay. So then we, we send in the terror oatmeal, who's the studio dog, yes. the poodle. And I was terrified <laughs> right off the bat. You guys have my heart racing. <laughs> Flashback. <laughs> Oatmeal's like docile, sleeping that? in the corner. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like the most yeah. peaceful Oatmeal. animal. We love that. Well, we're so happy to have you on. This is such a beautiful reconnection because you and I actually went to junior high together. Yes, we did. Favorite junior high. So I've known you since I was 13 years old. You yeah. have been 12. <laughs> yeah. Flash forward 20 Crazy. years, base, almost 20 years. Not quite, but like, That's and now crazy. we're here. What's your, what's like the one memory you have when you think of Fairview Junior High? Like, what's your fondest memory? My fondest memory of there? Or just one thing that comes to mind, like when you hear Fairview Junior High, like what comes to mind? I like picture the school you and actually school. like being in the front lobby where everyone used to hang yeah, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I like. That's yeah. the image that comes to my mind. What about you? Probably the basketball courts, I think. Okay. That, that was, you know. Out in the back corner. In the back. When you get there, that's where we went. After school, that's where we went. Lunch, that's where we went. I don't think I was ever up there, not even once. All <laughs> 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 oh, the was. boys were there. Well, you weren't. I wasn't obviously cool enough there to There was be. some girl basketball okay. player. No, no, you know, I just meant like, like she could have been there like. I know, you, know, you could have been on, you know, in the scene. game or. 
Oh, you you wanted me to play basketball. No, oh, that you could have been happening. on the sidelines. I'd be on the sidelines. I'd cheer you on. That's more of my role in that. Sarah, I remember <laughs> Sarah was a cheerleader. No, I was a volleyball player at Fairview, actually. So you didn't oh, cheer yeah, in high school? Oh, yeah, that's right. I was, too. I didn't cheer till high I school. I was, too. Were just you? Just not, not there. Yeah, we played volleyball. We would have gone away on tournaments Fairview and stuff Junior together. High had an incredible volleyball program, I believe. They did, like, yeah. Wasn't it like, it was just, weren't we, we always the best? That's what I, that was my memory as yeah. well. <laughs> I don't know if that's I true. Know, Someone I, can fact I don't know check what, uh, I think maybe it was just Mr. McGinnis. Like he just, yeah. I think he was just like, had an unreal passion for the sport. It must have been. And we used to have practices every morning at 745. Yeah. Oh, every that's morning. Really... Every morning. I loved it though. That's amazing. Okay. I want to ask you what your memory is of Sarah. Do you have any memories? Oh, I know exactly I, what he's going to say. Oh uh, yeah. You know what I'm going to say. It's just a visual. <laughs> it's a visual thing, but she used to have a gold or no, a diamond cemented little circle cemented in her tooth, like one of her two front teeth. <laughs> I forgot about so this. So when, yeah. when I'm thinking back to Sarah, that's just all I picture, just the sun gleaming off this <laughs> tooth as she's smiling. Or, or How cool did you feel, Sarah? <laughs> I, I don't know that I actually felt that cool, but it was like... Uh, it was permanent, was it not? Like, not no, it wasn't permanent, but, but it, it stayed it on stuck, for like two like, years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did your stepdad put that yeah, on? Yeah, he put it on. It wow. was like his new thing. He was... I was his marketing tool. That was actually one of the better ones because at one point I had braces for four years. So I I would have taken that gem go, yeah. over the four years of gem, braces. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see photos of this. I'll go back and find you one and, and see if I can. What's one of your memories of Quake? So easy. It is. I always picture you with Christian and Mark Fadul. Yep. Is that fair? Like yeah, I picture yeah, yeah. the three of you together, and yep. I feel like I used to always chat with you guys. I just loved you guys. It was like I lovely. feel like you chatted with everyone. I feel like you were bubbly and you you were just bouncing around everywhere and look at her now yeah. she's still talking to yeah. everyone <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the same thing but it's such a nice reconnection because okay so here we want to we're here to talk about your music but one mm. of the things i'm really curious about is when you actually started um kind of rapping and getting into music because yep. i remember then going to flash forward university and you were dating a girl at x so then we reconnected then after like oh, yeah. three years Shit, later I forgot about that too and it was yep. and i remember you were very much like active in your music at that point and it was so cool to be able to like support you and see that and then again flash forward another 10 years and it's just like grown yeah, I, I would say I started probably geez, 13, 14. I, was, I would have been at Fairview Junior High. Yeah. And I remember starting. I actually remember I was in Fairview Idol. I don't know if you remember that. And they had that group from Newfoundland. I believe they're called Crush, maybe. Is oh, that, does yeah. That, that does make sense. So they, they were big on the junior high scene. Yeah, so they were, <laughs> they were like the celebrity judges. And I remember I went into the Fairview, uh, yeah, the Fairview Idol or whatever, and everyone else was, like, singing other people's songs, like, doing cover songs. And I remember I had this, like, song produced by Classified, and I thought I was the man. I'm like, I got my own original song. I was like, I'm going to win for sure. And then I lost to a kid who lip-synced Simple Plan. And I was, oh. pretty, I was pretty upset. I think we need to... Well, do you know what? Who's heard of Crush? Maybe that just is, like, a bit... I've heard of Crush. <laughs> yeah. they, they, yeah. Maybe they aren't the is best the judges. the guys that play at Lower Deck and stuff? Or they I have used no to? idea. Oh. I, I haven't seen them since. They're lucky. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you were coming <laughs> after them now? That's amazing. No, no, it's all love. I really wanted that $50 mall gift certificate for the number one prize, but, I mean, I think I got myself out there with that performance. It... it it was the beginning. Listen, a lot of credit to you for standing up with an original song in front to. of your peers. That's yeah, hard. That's hard in high school. So how did this all start for you? Because you guys know each other, but I don't really know a ton about your, your journey. So obviously you were young when you fell in love with music yeah, and rapping. So I had a babysitter who lives two doors down still to this day, actually, um, from my mom. And she had two older sons, and they just had, like, this extensive music collection, like Tupac, Snoop Dogg, whatever. So, you know, when I was starting to go to school, my parents had to leave for work early so that, you know, I had an hour or two-hour window or I had to be looked after in the morning before I went to school, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was, I'd be, like, five years old starting primary. And then I'd be in these guys' rooms and just going through these CDs, like, what is this? Like... Putting this on, I remember the first one I heard, it was like 1994, I would have been like five years old. It was Snoop Dogg's first album, Doggy Style. <laughs> he, he was named Snoop Doggy Dog at the time. And I just remember there was like this paw print on the CD and we always used to try to draw it. And I don't know, just from then, uh, going through their collection, also wanting to be like them, dress like them. 
you know, you look up to the older kids. Mm. And it was just something that I heard with the music that wasn't, you know, it gave me a different vibe than my parents' music because my parents always had music around the house, like record player, like Bob Seger, you know, mm-hmm. Rod Stewart. Yep. So when I heard this Snoop Doggy Dog and his Tupac and this type of stuff, it just gave me a different feeling, like a rebellious type of feeling, and I just <laughs> loved it from there. And then, yeah, like just growing a little older, just started getting into it and starting to try to do it on my own. And then, yeah. yeah. The rest is kind of history, just step by step, I guess. Um, what was the path of actually starting to do it on your own and like figure? Because you were young, like you yeah, were fourteen so, years old. So like, how do you start? So step one was I asked my mom for a karaoke machine for Christmas, and it had like two sides on it, and you could play the beat on one side on a tape, and then you could have a blank tape on the other side, and then you could play the uh, whatever it was, and then you could. Yeah tape yourself you would only get one take though like Mm. so if you mess up the song you got to start over so that's how I started and I would just try to do the song the whole way through and then eventually I was like there must be some type of studio in Halifax so I was like 14 open the yellow pages me and uh Kelly Sear I don't know if you remember him yeah Pudge that's what I was rapping with back in the day and we found this spot in the north end this guy named Steve and he had the glass window and everything like that like we thought we were celebrities like I forget I what he charged that. us but we made like four songs you know brought it home on CD I think his mom picked us up like took us out to ice cream to celebrate yeah, <laughs> just young I love that. and then yeah and then from that point the second uh one of the second or third places I record was actually at Classified's house so then when I met him, it was kind of like got introduced to the scene more, meeting other people and then, yeah. you know, just a whole other person to look up to and, and seek advice from or whatever. But Well, especially especially on the East Coast, because it's not mm-hmm. like there is a lot of rap influences here. Like it's mostly like folk music and country. Yeah. And like I, I think there is a lot of um, history when it comes to rap music and a lot of talent, but I just don't think it was ever put at the forefront in the province. Really? I, yeah, I just think it's like, well, if you think about it, like, I don't know, I'm no I'm no history major, but think about it, like, Halifa- Halifax, Nova Scotia is like one, of, hip-hop, first and foremost, let's be honest, is a black music from the inner city. And Nova Scotia has, you know, the first ever black community and still the largest black community in Canada, which is North Preston. Mm -hmm. And people, you know, we have a large community where hip hop is a big thing. And I just think that it's never been at the forefront. Um, There's so many people that are talented here that have quit because they, it, it seems impossible. And I think one of my goals is to try to be a guy that shows that it's possible Mm -hmm. because if you've never seen somebody do something before, then you kind of lack confidence to think, well, I can do this. If you see someone else do it, it becomes a little easier. And I'm not saying Classified didn't do it. He did to a lot of people, myself included, look up to him. But as far as somebody from the, the city and, and you know, um, it's rare. I don't think there is one that we can say that really has taken it to the next level from the city of Halifax. So I don't know. I think that it's the city's growing. You see the buildings going up the population's growing yeah. i think one day you know there will be a kid from here whether it's the next generation or something or whether it's i can spark that influence or whether i spark someone else or someone else there's going to be someone super super big from here mm. um and it's going to happen one day because i just think we have all the makings for that but it just hasn't happened yet mm. i That's hope so it's you it's but yeah. it, it's 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 so true, though. Like, mm-hmm. and I love that you see that vision for the so. city. I think so. One thing I want to tell you, and then we'll actually get back to questions, but I just need to tell you this because I tell a lot Lost of people this slipping, hold on. about mm-hmm. you. Just roll the shoulders back. <laughs> yeah, roll okay, the shoulders okay. back. <laughs> I have so much admiration for what you do because I have seen you do this for literally more than a decade. Yeah. And just you've put out album after album. And even just seeing you in university and just the dedication, the shows you were putting on, how you give it your all. I've always had so much admiration for you, and you are so talented. And I just like thank you, thank you. No, I, pre- I appreciate. I think it's amazing. It. It's a long, it's a long road. I think for for any 
creative field or anything you want to master, um, you know, I'm sure you guys would agree. What number of episode is this for you guys? Like 96 yeah, like, or 97. Like a lot of things like, mm-hmm. you know, you got to do it over and over and over for, for people to pay attention no matter what it is you're doing. Mm-hmm. And I think I was conditioned with that mindset from people like a classified who work really hard and put out 10 albums before anything happened with him or, you know, I was just conditioned with that mind state. But I think that now a lot of the discouraged kids, it comes from because everything's so instantaneous. Like Mm. if I'm hungry, I can touch a button and get Uber Mm. Eats. Or if I want to, if I'm feeling down about myself, I can post a selfie and see how many girls like it. Or you can get this instant gratification and it kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Discourages you or makes you not want to, stick it out when you mm. when you can get this instant satisfaction and i think that is a that is a big hindrance in a lot of people's journeys and why they stop early they don't realize actually how long you have to go for and how many times you have to get beat down and how many doors have to be slammed in your face and how how much you know how thick of skin you actually have to develop to do it mm. um i saw this quote 50 cent said it the other day it was like uh He's like, you know, there comes, there's going to come a time where you think you're ready um, and it's not going to happen for you for another like five years after you think you're ready. But he's like, don't get discouraged because during that five years, you're going to develop skin thick enough so that you are ready when it does happen. And I think I agree mm-hmm. because I think I've had times where I felt I was ready for everything to be the biggest thing. And, and, and uh, looking back now, I'm like, damn, if that would have happened at that time, I would have been screwed i would have messed that up because i didn't have the mindset or the right. you know the proper you know whatever it is to, to do it but mm-hmm. and it was social media and stuff now i feel like kids get so blinded by mm-hmm. what they think can happen or happen yeah. really quickly and that's just not reality we've all no. run and, and have our own businesses and things like that and it's not easy and it takes a long time and I think that's one of the biggest things is like just be consistent and just show up and keep going. And um. I think so. And a lot of like there's two things. A lot of people see only the success story. So totally. when you see a new artist, it's like, oh, this brand new artist. And it's like, but what you didn't see was that artist working every day of their life for the past like 12 years. Mm-hmm. Like they don't show you that. And then another thing, there is people that win the lottery as well yeah. in, in the music or fame or whatever yeah. that get famous overnight out of nowhere but the thing is, when you go up that high, that quick, your foundation is weak, so it's going to crumble. And when yeah. it takes you a slow incline to climb up, every brick in your building is sturdy. So by the time you make it to the top, that building is going to last forever. That 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 career or whatever yeah. it is you're doing is sustainable. And I think that's another thing, too, Uh is like appreciate the slow climb because it's going to give you the lessons and the tools you need to actually stay successful when mm. you become successful rather than be up there one day and then you have no idea what to do and collapse the next day. It's like, yeah, you know, sure. this is such good advice. I know. I'm just going to, this is going to be like my morning pep talk. <laughs> one question I want to ask you on that is, can you tell us about now that you've kind of brought this up, any like a moment of resiliency that you've had? Where you've kind of bounced back after that door shut. Mm. Damn. I'll tell you this story. I was going to save this, but I, I'm going to tell you this story. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, like I said about the the dog thing that happened to Canada Day or whatever. Um, so, anyways, I was going... There's roller coasters with me with the, with the music. Like, there'll be times where I'm really happy with what I'm doing and there's times where I'm like man I'm just doing this over and over like Mm -hmm. I know I gotta keep going but like come on like when like give me something yeah and I was going through one of those moments and then like the dog I was already going through one of those moments and then the dog bit my face off and I couldn't record and I couldn't I had stitches all in my mouth and I'm just like come on man like Come on. Like, I'm trying so hard here. Like, give me a bone. God damn it. Don't use my face as a bone for the dog. Like, to something. <laughs> so anyway, I was going through this. I was on my girlfriend's back patio, and she lives with a view of the path on Main Avenue. I don't know if you know the back power line path. People yeah. can walk or bike or whatever. So I'm sitting there smoking a cigarette, and I'm just, like, talking to myself, and I'm looking out at the path, and I'm just like, man, fuck this. Fuck everyone can't do it anymore like just I just can't do it fuck it I tried my hardest can't do it I'm like I'm gonna give up 
whatever. So I'm taking my last couple of puffs of the cigarette, and there's a guy who is really overweight on the back path, like severely overweight. He's jo- he's covered in sweat. He's like jogging super slow. Like you can tell he's at like rock bottom. Like I need a change. I can't give up. And he's like running, like trying to better his life. And I'm just like, man, like it just inspired me. I'm like, man, I can't stop, man. What the fuck? Like I can't stop now. I put the cigarette out. I'm like, all right, I got to go even harder now. Like this is a sign from the universe. Yes. So this is a sign from the universe. I wake up the next day. Swear to God, the very next day when I, I looked at the universe, I got I gotta keep going. Yeah. Woke up the very next day, 7 a.m. in the morning. I like my phone is on my girl's nightside table. I look at my phone, I go to Instagram the first thing. First thing I open, I'm like, what the fuck? My inbox, champagne poppy. I'm like, what the what the what no. the fuck? Stop. And, no. Swear to God, it was a sign from the universe. It was Drake. And I'm not gonna say which song, but he's like, Yeah, I heard one of your songs, uh, because cause I'm going to give away something that could be on his album. I don't want to do that. But yeah. he's like, I heard one of the songs you did, and he's like, I had a song with that title. I was like, oh, send it to me. And he's like, no, it's uh, it was going to be something for my new album, like the new album he has coming. I won't say the name or whatever. And then he's like, we started joking, talking for a bit, and then, um, you know, making little jokes or whatever. And then, you know, at the end, he's like, no, I just want to, like, pay my respects and, and you know, let you know I see you and show show you some love and, like, so just like that moment, where I'm just, awesome. that moment where I'm like, damn, like I'm trying to like, I want to quit and say fuck everything. It's just like the next day, like literally the biggest artist in the world is like, I see you keep going. Oh so it's God. just, I don't know. I think that's a sign to yeah. anybody watching. Like you never know who's watching. Like yeah. never stop. No matter how much you want to stop or how much you feel like stopping, like you just can't ever stop. Oh, you never that's know. so crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> But yeah. And and that is sometimes you just need those signs or those yes. little things that and even it's good that you had that flip switched b- yeah. the night before on your yeah. own terms, right? Yeah, that yeah, you yeah. saw that man and you were like, "All right, let's let's, yeah. let's go because yeah, that's incredible." I just don't I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really I don't know if there's someone watching or if I it's the universe you. or whatever it is, but Someone's like listening. I just feel like that sign was like, "All right, we're going to give him this sign and see if he catches it or I don't that's how I see it." And I'm like, all right, I had the right decision. It's like, all right, here's your reward. I don't know. Like, that's no, how it that seemed is like. It. That that's is how it, it seemed like it was set up. Like, it yeah, was crazy. That's crazy. amazing. Yeah, it was super like, cool. Like, how do, how do you stay motivated then? I know there are times when you go, you know, roller yeah, coaster you, rides. You have, like, to, any? you have to search from within, I think, um, because if you base it off of short-term, like, likes, which is, like, short-term highs, where, whether it's comments or likes, yeah. Then it's like when those go away or you don't have something new, it's not sustainable. So at the end of the day, I think that it has to uh, come from within. It has to come from your love of the process of getting beat up and learning and, and, and coming back, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, that, that's good. Sarah's taking that. I'm, like, loving this. <laughs> Listen, I had no expectations for this conversation, but it is just, like, exceeding, ev- you know, everything's great. Man, the... I think the, uh, re- uh, what is this called? The all you, natural? You can mention. Luvo. No, this is the Luvo. This is the cold press red. Luvo's bringing it out of me right now, I think. Yeah. Let's keep <laughs> going. <laughs> <laughs> well, we send a mark to the liquor store to keep us stocked here. I'm loving this. So you just released a new album recently, earlier yep. this year, Mythics. Yep. yep. I I just like slurred that. But anyways, it's all good. T- tell us about it. <laughs> uh, so my... Debut album was called The Myth. It was 2010. Uh-huh. And this was the, you know, 10 years later. Mm-hmm. And I felt kind of like, uh, you know, I had been through the 10,000 hours. I took my lumps. I was in the minor leagues, per se. And this felt felt like, okay, this is like my debut again. Like, this is my, this is my major league debut. Like, it's kind of how I felt. Like, it kind of felt like full circle. So I just named it The Myth X, X being for 10, kind of like the iPhone X. Yeah. Might have took it from them. I don't know. <laughs> 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 Hopefully no one from App was watching this. <laughs> um, I dissed them in the last song too, so uh, it's another story. But uh, yeah, I, I just felt like it was, I don't know, full circle. And yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with how it did. It, it uh, reached number one on the iTunes hip hop charts for Canada, which I was great. That. And, you know, that's for people who... It, it is for people who, like, actually bought the album. Like, that's what determines these charts. So in an era where people don't actually pay and buy for the album, I have to be thankful that 
there's enough people out there willing to spend it and not just stream it or whatever. So yeah, I was grateful and and uh, yeah, happy with how it all turned out. We were in a pandemic, mm -hmm. shot yeah. like nine videos by my uh, with my my boy Moose, me being the only one in the videos and trying to get creative outside in the woods, like navigating through this pandemic, like yeah. trying to get cool shots and shit like that. So I mean, with what we had and and and. The little we had to work with, I'm just super happy with it. Um, definitely. It's an unreal album. And Thank like you. you said, huge achievement that in this era, you've had that many people actually buy the album and download. Mm -hmm. I did buy it. Did you? I Thank have you. it. Yeah, of course. Thank you got to support local artists. Like that. huge fan of that because streaming isn't like give you as the same kind of benefit no. as like actually buying it. Yeah. I mean, you need a lot of streams to. Too. Dave Sampson, when he was on, asked us to put it on every night on repeat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. we do. Yeah. yeah. Now I think, we'll get you, you, know in the cycle. you know what's crazy is I think they're, they're, uh, they've wisened up now, but there used to be people that would tell their fans to put the album on repeat while they're sleeping and just have the volume low. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like you can't hear anything. But now I think there is a certain level the volume has to be or else it doesn't count as a stream. Ooh. Like it has to be on at least one or two. So hide it somewhere. Yeah. In the cupboard. Like it has to be on it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Because they got hip to that because people were doing that. And uh, yeah, they, they they stopped that, I think. They figure everything out. Yeah. Well, now yeah. I've got a separate <laughs> office now, so I'll put it on for you. Yeah. At night <laughs> <when> <laughs> <I'm just> <laughs> So what's the writing process like for you? Do, do things just come to you? Are you always constantly writing and coming up with new ideas? Or do you kind of just like focus and go into a writing period? Uh, yeah, that's a good, good question. question. Very good question. I think everybody's different. But for me personally, um, I have to speak about something that I'm actually feeling. Like I, ha I can't just like, I mean, very seldom, but it's hard for me to just pick up and write about something else that I'm not going through. Like I use this kind of as a channel for stress relief and and, and as a, a place to vent. And, and so I think, I don't know, me personally, I just do it when I feel like it, like when something mm -hmm. comes to me or I want to get something off my chest or I'm feeling happy or whatever it is, whatever emotion it is, I kind of do it like that. And I try not to beat myself up for not doing it every day mm. because I think that you actually have to take the time to go and live life for a bit and then come back and write about your experience. Like, I mean, I don't know. I've tried to sit there and write every day and it'd be days where I would sit there and nothing would get written for eight hours and I would stare at the screen. It's just like I can't force myself through that anymore. Like mm. not at this period. I've been around too long and I feel like I can't just I'm not experimenting anymore with like who I am as an artist I kind of know who I am as an artist and it's like if I get in that mood or that zone where I know I'm going to be productive sure the song will get written quickly but yeah. I try not to force it anymore um but the process would just be throw on a beat that suits the mood I'm in find something and then uh there's a plethora of different ways sometimes I write it down all down and then sometimes I'll do it line by line in my head. So I'll just say the first line, record that. Sit back, play it, be like, okay, what could be next? Second line, record that. And just write none of it down. So there's different ways you can play around with it. But, I mean, I don't think there's any wrong way. As long as it's a good product in the end, then there's no, no yeah. rules, right? But Oh, that's kind of cool. Letting yourself off the hook, too, is so important, I think, in creative processes. Because mm -hmm. you can't force it. Like No, I mean, I don't know. It's a fine line. There's there is a line. You can get lazy. Yeah. Like you know, you can't beat yourself up for, for wanting to take a week off, or two weeks off, whatever the period. However you work. I mean, I I don't think you should feel guilty. And that's one thing I do. I still have to tell myself because I really do feel guilty a lot. Like hmm. when I was playing. Like I just put out the album, and then I was playing a lot of golf this mm -hmm. summer, and like a few couple weeks before I did something, and I would start to feel really guilty. And it's just like, man, you can't can't do that can't yeah. do that to yourself like it is what it is i don't know no and that's why right. i think like over time you learn your processes and you learn yeah. that pattern and you learn mm -hmm. to trust yourself right i was yeah. i was watching something the other day i forget it was uh i forget the guy's name um and it was like just just a really smart guy like uh psycho uh what do you call it? like a psych guy and he's just like yeah. really he's like the human brain can only take like three hours of 
strong creativity work a day or something like that. It's like three or four. He's like, sure, you can do eight, but it's not going to be, you're not going to be at your highest peak. And then the next day, it's going to take away from that. He's like, look at it as like a gas tank. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, if you, if you let some out or whatever, you're not going to have much left in the tank for the next day. I don't know. So that's what I try to do. I try to work mornings. Mornings is best for me. I wake up like seven, try to go to like noon, one, get something to eat, go on with my day. Mm. Like, you know, that's good. Yeah. There's nothing better than when you're actually in it and enjoying it and feeling focused because I think that we've talked about this, Sarah, yeah. even with COVID and just being more kind of flexible with your work schedule in general. You can get so much shit done in a few hours. Yes. If you're not distracted and you just kind of like go for it. Yes. And then you can enjoy your life. I completely agree. I completely yeah. agree. I, th- I think a lot of us, including myself, tend to take the long way around. And then it's like what you could have done if you just really focused and bared down for that three hours. You know, it takes eight hours because then you're, you're on your phone every two seconds. And it's like, I, I totally agree. I think that that's where I'm trying to lean towards right now. It's like, get it done. No phones. I just deleted all the uh, social media apps on my phone today. We'll see how long that lasts. But Uh-oh. but it's also kind of cool when you <laughs> just download them to use them. Mm-hmm. That That's what I was thinking. And then you delete them again. Delete them after. I've never done that. Because then you have to log in every time. So it, it like breaks that compulsive habit. You mm-hmm. can't just open them. You have to like vary. There, it just sets up more gates that you have to go through. Like I had to download it. Too when I was downstairs, work. I didn't know where I was at. I just downloaded it. I'm like, okay, I'm here. Delete it again. You know? Oh, we I sh- love that. We should have gave, we gotta given hear you how our phone number beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's a good idea. Maybe even during the week. Delete. Yeah. Maybe on the weekend. Yeah. Reload. I don't Re- know. I like that. Weekend. Maybe I'll try that. Yeah. Should I hit delete? We will it? have so much more right. free time in our lives. Have you ever looked at your screen time? Like, yeah. yeah. Well, insane. it tells you sometimes. It's insane. The only time is sometimes mine skew because I have like Spotify or something open all day. Okay. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Well, you can lock the screen and it doesn't count. Yeah. You know what I mean? What about, yeah. and sometimes I do workout video. Let's just oh, tell yeah. ourselves these things. That's an extra True. hour. Here. But it does, I feel like, it, it breaks I feel like down, Quake's though. holding us accountable. Um, He's like, nah, nah, girl. No, that and is it does, bullshit. It does break down like productivity. <laughs> like when I'm, yeah. it'll say like, if I'm listening to an audio book or whatever and I forget to lock the screen, it's like, it'll say like, whatever the, the thing is, is like learning or educational. Or yeah. like, and Thumbs then up for that. It shows Instagram <laughs> and all that shit. Like, I don't know. We got to look at this a little more critically. But I have thought about that, like <laughs> deleting it and then forcing myself to just like, I go through periods where I'm on my phone too much and it bothers me. Mm-hmm. Or And like exactly like you said, it interrupts my work and yep. I'm not, like I never get to the headspace of like focus. Mm. It makes, I don't know if, about you guys, like I don't know, but I'm a really competitive person and it makes me kind of angry. <laughs> like social media, like, you know, if I'm, especially if I'm not feeling the greatest about myself in the current moment or like if I slacked off that day and yeah. I'm on my phone. So I'm already feeling guilty for slacking off. Yeah. And then I look at maybe someone else who just put out a new video of it. Fuck this guy, man. Like, Do you know, you know what I mean? Like, in your head. Like, and I'm like, this isn't, phone. I'm like, this isn't healthy. Like, I, you no. know, and I'm no, like, yeah. I have to. So I, I don't know. At least I try to be aware of it. And, no, I love that. Do what you were you going to say? I was going to say Connie. <laughs> McGinnis, I always she's always posts stories and it's like six a.m. posts. I'm like, God love her. I need to get up early. Yeah. Yeah. she's like my or inspiration. Her, her, I'm not angry, but I'm like, like out for the yeah. day. Yeah, she's yeah. like yeah. she's like seven <laughs> before seven every morning. But I'm then like, it makes you do God. something sometimes. No, I love yeah. it. No, it like I find it inspiring. But I know what you mean. You like yeah. see other people. And Shout it's out. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it is like a funny thing. One of the things I did want to ask you, Cena, is we did ask you about your moment of resiliency. Tell us, like, a career highlight for you. Um, damn, I don't know. I don't know if there's just one. I I, uh, I don't know if there's just one. Like, I, I look back and I think that, that all the little pieces are, like, who, what made me who I am. And I yeah. think that I don't, I don't think there's one defining thing that makes you who you are or for me to give advice, like, yo, this is what it all changed. Like, I think at the end of the day, it's a slow climb and there's little moments along the way, but I don't know. I'm thankful for a lot of the moments. A lot of them stand out to me. Like, obviously getting to meet your heroes and stuff like that is always a boost. Like, um, I had a tour in Europe and I got to bring my mom because I already been there like four, three or four times. So this time I was like, I'm going to bring my mom. She always wanted to go to Europe. So me and my mom were like, rolling through Europe, oh. Amsterdam, for everywhere. And like, just, it was, it was different from the times I was there, but just getting to see it, you know, with my mom was cool. Um, 
Yeah, that was probably the best. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Especially now, since <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's not a thing. Yeah, yeah. But that's, that's like a really sweet moment, memory. too, because she's a big Hell part yeah. of your journey, and she's yeah. proud Hell of yeah. you. And like, Hell yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I can't imagine all, like, damn. When I think about it, like, all the loud music of, like, all those nights or us being drunk down there and <laughs> smoking dope in her basement and this, man, she went put through a lot. And, uh, yeah, she's always been there, so. And my dad, too. Like, I, I've been lucky. Yeah. You know, That's but, awesome. yeah. Yeah. No, it's sure. cool. And it's great to have them as support systems for, like, you know, a less conventional career, but one that's mm-hmm. pretty incredible. Yeah. I mean, yeah. There's probably a lot of parents who, who would frown upon trying to be a musician mm-hmm. or, or whatever the case. But, yeah, I had, I had a really good uh, support, so that was good. Shout out to mom and dad. We love yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's next for you? What's what's exciting? What's coming up? Tell us. Um, I just can't wait to do shows again. Like mm. really, that's really what I'm I'm trying to what I'm looking forward to. I want to travel. Travel brings a lot of my inspiration on. So I've been kind of totally. going a little crazy. Um, but yeah, can't wait to do shows. Can't wait to get in front of people again and uh, travel, see different cultures, see the world. Soak where it where all would in. you perform right now if you could go anywhere? Anywhere? Damn, Ooh. I don't know. That's that's a crazy question. <laughs> <laughs> it feels so out there to yeah. think about. <laughs> like, is it a, is it sold out? Like, are we dreaming here? Yeah, yeah. we're dreaming. Okay. Sell it out. Okay. Where are yeah. you playing? Yeah, because I don't know how many fans I would have. Put it in, into the universe. In Italy in the moment, but Whoa. damn, I feel like that would be crazy. We'll fly over. That yeah. would be amazing. <laughs> the food, everything. I feel like it'd be crazy. Oh Ooh, all right. That's the vision. It's yeah. out in the universe. Or to uh, like my mom's side is Italian. My dad's side is Lebanese. So either Italy or Lebanon. Do I've both. never been to Lebanon. Go from one to the other. Yeah, it's a tour. It's yeah. a tour. Yeah. It's a mini tour. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the ancestry <laughs> tour. For <laughs> yeah. For his heritage. I love that. Mm-hmm. All right, before we wrap, we've got a couple more questions for you. Ash, yeah. you're going to take the first. What is lighting you up right now? What are you the most excited about? Lighting me up? Mm-hmm. Damn, I don't know. That's a crazy question. <laughs> what is lighting me up? What am I most What are you excited about? about? It could be what, something just about like summer. Anything. anything. Damn. The future, I think. Ooh. The future. You know? The the just the possi- the possibilities of what could be. I think that's what keeps me going or lights me up. Um, in all aspects. I think it's like golf, you know? <laughs> Your next shot. It's always you always got another shot to try to beat the one before. That's what that's what keeps you going. Oh, I love so that. Good. <laughs> All right. Now we're getting to the less see I mean, this has been very serious, obviously. I know you yeah. felt that the whole way through. Yeah. We're gonna play <laughs> you feel serious like this is I, serious? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dead serious. Okay, Dead. what are we doing now? Now we're gonna it gets play- more serious? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's gonna get it gets less serious if that's right. possible. Yeah, that's cool. We're gonna play wound wa- uh, wound. Wow, wound. I'm really having a hard time talking right You're now. You're wound up. I'm you wound up. Wound. Uh, All right, we're going to play a round with an R, a round of Queenie Grams, which is our made-up game. It's very... Queenie Grams. Queenie Grams, mm-hmm. you know? Okay. In alignment with our name, Rival and Queen, you know? And Instagram. And Instagram. I don't know. <laughs> is it? Maybe. Yeah, at Grams. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, I see. All Photos. right. All you have to do is pick a number between 1 and 136, then we're each going to take a turn. I'm going to ask you a question. So just pick a number. What's okay. your feeling? 136. Ooh. We're going right to the end. This is a new question. Do then. you ever talk to yourself out loud? Um, <laughs> I think when I'm when I'm drinking, <laughs> like for real. That's the only time I talk to myself in my head when I'm like competing or doing anything, like yeah. even on the golf course, you know. Um, but I think when I'm drinking, and I, I even have like some voice notes from when I'm drinking, like <laughs> reminders, like. I don't even want to listen to them sober. Like I, if, you should. If, I think if I you should. Back, yeah, y'all yeah, be like, man, they can't stop you. Like they can't. Like, this. <laughs> <laughs> like I'll, you know what I mean? If I'm like writing a song and I'm putting myself in that attitude, like, oh, yeah, I will. Maybe sure. listen like to that. them when you're drunk next time. Yes. They might really hit home. I think, yeah, I think it'd be I think you should listen. Sometimes when I'm running, ideas come to me and then I make a voice memo. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. It's I don't a, do the voice memo. It's memos. a very, uh, yeah, it's a good you may not like this comparison, but apparently Taylor Swift does that too does when she? she's running. Yeah. 
I mean, she did okay. Yes. Yeah, can't say anything <laughs> bad about her. <laughs> that might be a good thing. I'd like to know what the golf self talk is, though. <laughs> well, if you like, if you hit a bad shot or a bad part, you're obviously in your head. Like, ah, oh, uh, my like, foot was in the wrong. Yeah, position. yeah. Like, what am I doing? Like, <laughs> yeah. I was lined up wrong. Like, mm-hmm. whatever it is, right? I did but, that. I'm lined up wrong all the time. <laughs> Ashley's <laughs> always like, I knew you were gonna do that. <laughs> do you ever talk to yourself out loud? Yeah. Yeah. All the time. Sometimes, like, come on, Ashley. I feel like if I'm in a really good mood and I'm home alone and I'm doing something, I just like randomly talk or sing to myself. Oh, I like that. I think it's healthy. Yeah. But I know you and I both do the humming thing and I catch myself doing it. I don't know that I hum, but I do. Everyone tells me this. I do. Like, I do. (laughs) I think it's like an awkward thing. You do do just to, I don't know. You're in the grocery store and you're like, hmm. Oh, I don't know. Does anyone else do that? I just, but it's the same pattern. I, I do the uh, Hockey Night in Canada theme song. Is like my That's go-to, go-to humming. Yeah, I have like I used to do that. I don't know if I do it as much anymore, but I would pick like a li- like a lyric, whatever one's caught in my head, and I would just keep saying it. But I, I feel like that. I don't know if that's talking to yourself. I feel like that's no. just like more of a pleasantry. Yeah. I a do icing on the cake. A something. little icing on the cake. That's yeah. a nice little catchphrase. Um, I do talk to myself when I'm sending text messages or emails yeah, and people do. are around me. Because I, f- for some, <laughs> this is not real. Like, I know this isn't true, but I feel like including them on what I'm doing because I feel like it's rude. I'm on my phone. Is that what it is? That's what I'd be think. like, oh, this per- and okay, and we're going to go here next week. And sometimes How I'm like, are you? like- <laughs> Do you when you when you read someone's text in your head? Do you read it in their voice? Like, Sometimes. can you hear I've them? Never. Can you hear them saying that? I think no, I've never very, done that. Oh, is yeah, it in your that. own voice? Do no, you very specific people. Whenever you'll write something, if it was like yes, because Sarah <laughs> writes like that, and I could hear a that an extra e so- sound in my mind. You can hear it. Can hear it. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's fair. Have do you, you do that? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> Have you ever been texting somebody? And you're talking to someone at the same time, and then what you're telling this person, you, you put text. in the text box. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. I was like, wrote something about someone's shoelaces the other day. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, just like yeah. an absurd text. I freaking love that. Ash, pick a number for me. I'm going to do 134. 134. Ooh. Wow. Sticking with the high numbers. Do you believe in the psychics? But I just want to point this out. I spelt this wrong. I obviously wasn't paying attention. Wrote physics. Physics. (laughs) And I hope you believe in physics. Are we going with physics or psychics? (laughs) But tell us if you believe in psychics. Yes. Ooh. Most definitely. Most deaf? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. That just made me think of when I wrote interrupted or introverted the wrong I was like is this the in- wrong word interpreted and she's interpreted. like is this the right word I was like that's interrupted your, see, we're, <laughs> we're coming up with new questions off of Queenie Grimm's but doesn't that ever happen to you when your brain doesn't remember which word is like you forget a word spell a word yeah I yeah. think well even like when we were in school I think I, I like I never confused their T-H-I-R their like you're never confused that like obviously yeah. know the difference but i feel when i'm texting i'll notice the mistake and i'll be like what am i even like just because it's been so long in school i guess i don't know but <laughs> I, I always misspell those little ones like that now Ooh, it, it's it hurts it hurts <laughs> it does do, do you feel stupid <laughs> oh you're not i and always corrected that. too oh, uh, uh, oh yeah little asterisk little st- yes, yeah, little i don't yes. correct anything and you should see the spelling mistakes that i send out <laughs> poor and like i have to text strangers and they think i'm sure the strangest things about me you're going 100 miles an hour I she's know. talking out loud and texting <laughs> i know <laughs> that's the thing like it's never like a real <laughs> communication what about you guys psychics yes no um i have a weird relationship with psychics as you know it's so strange because i believe in so much as our audience knows <laughs> 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 like anything mystical, I'm like, yep, a hundred percent in. But I've recently, uh, in the last few years, I'm like, I'm not going to psychics anymore. They bother me. You what? You've gone. I've gone before, do, do and they, like mostly for fun. But they usually say something that bothers me and like sticks in my mind, but and is I can't it vague shake it. Enough that you would attach what they said to one of your life moments, or is it like your dad's name is this? He's from this town. Yeah. Like, it's probably vague, but it's like it's connected to me or something that's on my mind enough that it like sticks with me, even though it's not real. And that's the reason why I'm like, this is not for me anymore. 
Yeah. Like I'm like I don't want this. I don't want to think. But in the in the universe, do oh, you in the think universe, there's people that yes, can. I do think there's uni- have there's, psychic power. Yes, I do okay. believe that people do have some psychic abilities. I think. Th- I what think, about you? Yeah, I think that's a better that's a better phrase. I think like in the universe, mm-hmm. that's probably a strong possibility. But like. I don't know. If you go down to the one in Fairview on Dutch Village Road with is the there windows one there? lit up, I don't know. Is like, it I don't, good? I don't. I just don't believe that whoever's in there. No disrespect to them, local business. Do your thing, but I just don't believe that whoever would be in a place like that can knows anything about me. you. Yeah, like. How? Should we go together? Is there a place there? <laughs> Should we all well, we go? Went. We went. Yeah, and we it went was together. Fun. I didn't like that. She. It was nothing exciting, but rival on the road. She, she told, yeah, rival on the. Road. She told me at the time that my boyfriend was my sister in a past life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then she had a vision of me braiding his, then her oh, that, hair. They <laughs> told you weird stuff. Yeah. They didn't tell me weird shit like that. Did you see these documentaries about the children that remember uh, the past life? It's on Netflix. What? Yeah, so these What's kids- it called? I gotta watch oh, this. What's is it, it called? scary? Just look, just Google the uh, reincarnation on uh, Netflix or whatever. Okay. And it's like, uh, the kids, like, they'll have a birthmark, like, on the head or something. It's like, where they died. It'll be like, yeah, I'm this person. I was this person. And then they'll, like, they're able to, like, point out the pictures of, like, who it was. Then they talk to their families, like, just say the old man died. They'll yeah. talk to, like, their daughters. And the daughters will ask them questions and they'll get it all right and be mm-hmm. like, who, like they remember this shit. That's it's so crazy. crazy. Well, I hope that happens. I hope we all are reincarnated to some, yeah. something different. I it's heard. crazy. Ooh, I like it. But I think we should do Rival on the Road and hit up a psychic place now. <laughs> this is like my new thing. Well, I, I, what's this celebrity, Tyler? He's blonde, um, oh, young know. guy. He has a show. Oh, yeah. Tyler, and he does all. Um, celebrity psychic readings mediums i guess it's really? called but he doesn't tell the, he just shows up at their house or they meet up somehow and he wouldn't know say it could be like chloe kardashian or it's yeah mm-hmm. big celebrities and he's insane watching him do oh, it and really? he, he takes paper and draws everything out and i don't know he do, he it's like, like he's possessed all of a sudden yeah all these things come Fuck. yeah Ooh. So, crazy. so yeah, I do believe they. I exist. think it exists. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no. Okay, this has been good. But everyone, I feel there's a lot. There's got to be some frauds out there. Oh, one thousand has to be. Like an anything. Most percent. probably most. Yes, agree. <laughs> agree. <laughs> Don't go to a psychic at a fair or something like that. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, you really have to like find out that they're the right one. Mm-hmm. Ellen apparently had a psychic that she went to that when she was making she said Ellen DeGeneres, DeGeneres. Okay. and I saw this interview somewhere she was making 28,000 a year and like I and maybe it was David Letterman. He was like a cool twenty eight grand a year when she was on Finding Nemo at first. Like she was the voiceover because it was after it was like her first major work after she had come out as a lesbian and yeah. had been kind of like blacklisted in Hollywood. And this woman was like, "You're gonna have your own show, and it's gonna go on for like more than a decade or something like that." And she like at that point it was like absurd to her. Like it was, that she that didn't would, believe it. That no, because she was like, "How I'm making twenty eight thousand dollars a year, living in like a bu- like an apartment in a bungalow, trying to make ends That's meet." That's fucking crazy. Like, do you know, and then so she started. She would go back to her like once a year, basically, because it, that oh, was we like need to a find crazy, this lady. Yeah, it was kind of cool. That's crazy. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go to. Oh my god, one nineteen. What is your go-to karaoke smash hit? <laughs> this is my question. Wow. And this, I have to tell you this. So one of my, so I will do almost anything. I'm like, I'm like pretty, sh- not shameless, but just like I have, I'm confident. Like it's fine. But a secret fear of mine, which I revealed to Mark and all of his friends this past weekend at the cottage is like, I have never wanted to do karaoke. Like it's actually a fear of mine, like a stage fright. I that, get, se- that seems very strange. I know. Considering Have your you never done it before? No. So that's what I mean. It's like a secret thing that I really you, don't want to do. And I don't tell people. And it's weird because I would get up and talk in front of a crowd of like a thousand people and never even think twice about it. You know what you got to do? And we did it this weekend. It's so funny you brought this up. We actually went to the the... One on Spring Garden, and you go and you, it's the private it. room ones, mm. and it was actually the like the funnest time ever. Was but it? Yeah. Are, are you expecting that everyone 
is going to be able to sing and you're not going to. No, sing. I just have to tell you, it's just like, I don't like it. And I will tell you, I told Mark's friends this and they forced me to sing Oh Canada to all of them. <laughs> and I did, not even on you karaoke. You should just not have told them. In a circle. Never have no, I told them because it's like, it's good to face your, well, no, they broke out a karaoke machine and the expectation was we were all doing it. Like there was no way for me to get out of this. And then I did sing in a group of five on the mics a Spice Girls song, but I didn't like it. Like I, I don't. Why? I, what? Like? Well, I'm terrible at singing, like so do, bad. But do you think that people, uh, your friends, are expecting you to be like Celine Dion or something? Yeah. Or, no, I don't. <laughs> but it's just like any of my natural like performance abilities disappear. Like Mark, our producer, great. He was up there for 45 minutes. I actually had a great time. Where is this at? At his cottage. Okay. Mark, he woke up all the he, neighbors. He gets the karaoke out here sometimes going. I know. It was, anyways. Uh, invite me down. I'll come I know. It. Like, just. <laughs> so, well, anyways, help me conquer the spirit. My karaoke smash hit. And I'll tell you this, it's oh, embarrassing. I've looked, no, it's not. I've looked up the easiest songs to sing. It's, ha- it's like. You've Googled this. Because I had such a fear so for me. Fear I need lives, a list. This fear lives deep the in your mind came that to me you today. are prepping for I'm it. I'm prepping for yeah. it because it's, act, like, this is what I'm saying. This, I'm embarrassed about this, okay? Like, this isn't like me normally being stupid. It's like, I'm actually embarrassed. This is all embarrassing for me. I'm so uncomfortable at the idea. I have to have a list ready in case it ever comes up because I'm scared. So so what, what's at the top of the list? Um. Nine to five by Dolly Parton because I can talk through most of it. Wow, that would be a hard You're one. You're really sing. just trying to take the easy, yeah, the, the easy way route. out, the easiest route because wow. I'm actually afraid. Like I actually am afraid. Anyways, this Hit a, is, sing a note from that right now. Uh, I don't remember. Working anyway. nine to five. <laughs> it's you different here because I'm like, this is our jam. I get it. I get you know, it. like we sing sometimes. Lions Head one used to have a good one. Okay, tell okay, tell us your karaoke smash it. Uh, God, I can't believe I'm. I've done now. I've done a couple karaoke things, but like I think my go to is I always just pick like some ran- like a random rap song that's like not even fun, and I'll just like do that. I've done that at Lions Head a couple times. Uh, Amazing. Like, like forgot about Dre and shit like that. <laughs> yes, but. I don't know. I think, well, I was trying to do my go-to at the uh, karaoke on Spring Garden that we went to. They didn't have it. Mario, oh, Mario, Let Me Love You. Oh, that, that's that was, so good. Just my go-to. Right? Dude, we, we're not. Mm, I, I also one like. One of the greatest hey songs. Hey Ma I by think. Cameron. That one's good too. <laughs> Cameron? Yeah. What is it? It's Cameron. Sorry. Cameron, sorry. <laughs> but what song? Hey Ma. Cameron. <laughs> so, can I tell you what mine is? <laughs> and it came to me today. <laughs> this is all my karaoke coming to life. We're going to sing this one together next time, Sarah. Is I was driving home from the I gym and I pulled in the parking Tell me garage yours, for the love of God. and Tony Braxton <laughs> Unbreak Your Heart. Is it Unbreak My Heart? Yeah. Oh, Came yeah. on and I sat, like, I sat in the car and I was like, I've never felt this song. She's so deep. And so, mm-hmm. and I went she up. She does have a deep voice. I know, but I was like Unbreak really into it. I went up and I was still singing and Jeff was like, why are you singing that song? Me. So you know, I feel like that's what I would sing. As a kid, and this came up, this song came up the other day, yeah. but I always thought this. T- Tony Braxton, he wasn't man enough for me. It mm. almost sounds like a man saying, so it's like, he wasn't man enough for me. I'm like, damn, it's kind of like, and then I'm like, Tony, you hear that it's Tony. So yeah. I'm like, it's kind of yeah. like confusing at first. She's it's, it's, she's almost sounded you like need a, to put I almost thought she was a man as a as a kid. <laughs> no, no disrespect. Right? To, no, she's got a deep to voice. Tony, if she's watching, but like deep voice is what I. So does Tracy she's Chapman. So does Cher. Mm. You know, oh, I Very love true. a Cher. Very yeah. true. Yeah, but anyways, we're maybe Cameron as well. <laughs> <laughs> Cameron. <laughs> I'm joking. I know. Anyway, I saw. What is it, Jules? Right. Jules. Jewel Santana. Jewel. <laughs> Jewel. We're going to go rival on the road. We're going to psychics. We're going to karaoke. I'm spring graduate. We're going to relive all my worst mm. nightmare. Oh, no, no. This will be great. We're doing this together. We should. I think we should. We should. That'll be, we'll bring a little crew. We'll get some video footage going. This will be a great little day. We'll do it all. Well, it's been this. so good hearing more about your journey and getting to know you. And I feel like you guys had a, a little bit of a reunion. This was so yeah, nice. Yeah, this was great. I'm glad you guys... <laughs> Got to speak with you guys. You guys shared some of your deepest fears with me, <laughs> some of your highlights, some of your thoughts. It's been incredible. No, we're so thankful that you came on. No, we I had you. a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, wait, before we wrap. Oh, my gosh. No, we I always need, do this. No, I, I was thinking about it. Okay. Where Don't can you gotta people pick a number? find you? No, I picked the numbers. That's how we got into the karaoke fears. Oh, okay. She had to sing a karaoke song. <laughs> Where can people find you online? Uh, Quake Matthews everywhere. Quakematthews.com, all social media, Quake Matthews. Uh, 
and two, across two the board. Two T's. Yeah. What? Two T's. Matthews. Yes. Oh yeah. Two T's. I was like, where are there T's in your name? <laughs> You're right. We'll Wait. tag that in the show notes. <laughs> and you can download his latest album on Apple or stream it everywhere. Yes. Myth X. Go yes. listen now. 